morning, this is Jason. Welcome to Liberty Live. Today we're gonna to be discussing pomegranates. What is a pomegranate really? And why are we discussing it here today on Liberty Live? Very simple. You need to know that a pomegranate has amazing divine symbology connecting us to the Lord our God. Many scriptures in the Bible speak about pomegranates in various ways, but what we're gonna hone in on today is their value and their symbology in the priesthood. Now, first of all, there's a very famous promise in Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 and 8, that says something exactly like this. When you come into the land of promise, the Lord your God is bringing you into, which is a good land, a land with streams, springs, fountains, issuing from the plain, the valley, and the hill, a land that's flowing with wheat, barley, vines, figs, and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat food without scarcity and you will lack nothing, a land whose also rocks are copper and whose hills you may dig copper. Uh, you have to understand that this pomegranate, big pomegranate, regular pomegranate, ceramic pomegranate, See, pomegranates are used for art and, and beautification all over the world uh, because what we believe about the pomegranate, uh, there's foam pomegranates used for decoration. Uh, and this ceramic one, for an example, the, uh, the top of this fruit, the crown, the adornment looks like a crown of a king. Uh, even though it hangs on a tree this way, uh, it represents, some people believe, fertility. Some people think this could have possibly been the fruit of the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil. And other people say that actually, if you open a pomegranate, not that each one has 613 seeds, but the average of the seeds in the pomegranates, ranging from about 165 to 1400, Uh, the average is 613 seeds. Why does that matter? Because there's 613 commandments in the, uh, in the law of Moses. And so the law and the covenant that was given to us at Mount Sinai, there were 613 exact uh, oracles, if you will. And so they say that this is a divine fruit. Now, why are we connecting this to the divine besides? In other words, how did we start examining this in the first place? Uh, besides the fact that it came as a super fruit from God himself who planted it in the land. Now, by the way, have you ever seen a fully ripe pomegranate tree? They are absolutely gorgeous. You have to imagine, we went from the desert to a land with trees flowing with dates and pomegranates and figs and vines and grapes. I mean, we're talking about real paradise beauty on earth, not to mention the health properties of all of these type of fruits. Now, let me show you a pomegranate tree, by the way. Here's a picture here. These pomegranates, again, like a dwarf pomegranate, something like this size here, or a baby pomegranate, getting larger, finally maturing. How beautiful, unbelievable, right? I mean, this beauty is just unmatched. Now, uh, let me tell you this. The Lethraceae is a family of flowering plants to whom which the pomegranate belongs. There's about 32 genera, 620 species. We would say pomegranate's the king. It has the most beautiful flower and it opens up from a little baby pomegranate. By the way, here's a baby pomegranate on the, on the top. It says, uh, Kodesh Lo Hashem, for the holy to the priests of the Lord. that they found, and it was actually carved out of hippopotamus bone. And they say it went, went on a scepter for one of the high priests, and it dated back to the time of Solomon. Well, later on, it broke uh, because it was mishandled, and they said the break didn't line with the Paleo-Hebrew. So they so it, originally, they bought it for 850000 and put it in the Israel Museum for 10 years. Next thing you know, they said it was a fake. They ditched it, but then they found a few more that were real, and they looked at it again, and they said, wait a minute. If we re-examine re the crack and where the letters actually ended and started and stopped in the patina, this is a real article. And the interesting thing about this size is the size exactly of a dwarf pomegranate. Here, here's a picture right here. Okay, 
Um, we also find these on coins. Here's a picture of a coin from the first century, turn of the first century. And you can see three baby dwarf pomegranates on there. We find these coins also in the Barcoba Rebellion. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, also, the pomegranate, the name is Punica granatium, which means seeded apple or something like an apple filled with many seeds. All over the Mediterranean, it was cultivated since the, uh, obviously since Genesis and the Garden of Eden. But we find many like bronze pomegranates, ceramic pomegranates in the late Bronze Age Levant all over the, uh, basically the nation of Israel and surrounding nations. Uh, one thing we have to know, in the Promised Land, when the spies came back from the Valley of Shkol, we're all familiar with the cluster of grapes. Here's a very famous picture by da James Tassat of two of the spies with the cluster of grapes going almost all the way to the ground. Unbelievable. The land of giants. This was the promised land. But also, look at what it says here in the verse, that they came back from the land of a skull, the Wadi Skull, and they cut down a branch of a single cluster of grapes, and it had to be borne by two of them. It was so big. And also pomegranates and figs. Now, one thing I asked about the 613, usually here we have these pomegranates. And we go, open it up yourself. There's no way you could get 600 seeds in there. But then you have a guy this big, and you say, wait a minute, maybe that's possible. There's bigger pomegranates than this. But as I told you, that's just an average. Beautiful, but an average. On the high priest's robe also, uh, and on the belt, there was either embroidered pomegranates and there was woven pomegranates on the bottom of the high priest's robe and on the capitals of the pillars of the temple of God. So this is not something we're just overemphasizing or spiritualizing. This is something that is spiritual and it's being manifested in the natural. So we understand by examining it in the natural, perhaps it does have some spiritual uh, lessons and ideologies we must grab a hold of. By the way, there's no other fruit in other palm trees in the temple which bear dates, but there's no other fruit in the temple itself uh, besides the gourds. Again, where we get the idea for the temple vessels, a gourd is like a fluted or pleated, um, uh, something like an acorn squash. It's called a gourd. It's a family of pumpkin squash and other uh, neighboring type of vegetables. Um, but this here, for an example, is the miel. Okay, the miel is the garment that the high priest wears underneath the uh, gemstones of the high priest breastplate. And these are the pomegranates that would go on the bottom of the vessel. And you can see they are uh, sewn and embroidered, they're stoned by yarn. And they go, here's another picture, one bell, one pomegranate, one bell, one pomegranate. Let me read you this verse, and I'll tell you why that is. <clears throat> In Exodus 28, it says this was uh, a robe we were commanded to make of pure blue. Showed you this is the miel, it's a sleeveless garment that goes underneath the breastplate of the Lord. And on the bottom you shall make a robe of pure blue. On the opening of the head shall be the, uh, a binding of woven work, like the opening of a coat of mail, so it does not tear. And on the hem, on the bottom, you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and crimson yarns all around the hem with bells of gold between them. Now you understand if there's a bell and you shake it, it sounds like a high B. The moment it clangs into another bell, you lose the beautiful singularity of each bell. But if there's a woven pomegranate in between, it's not only unbelievably beautiful, but now it protects the bells from clanging. It almost acts as a uh, insulator, if you will, or, or a, uh, a protectant barrier, like a sound barrier in between each bell so that they are able to harmonize without clanging. This is unbelievable. Um, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate all around the hem of the robe. Now they say there were 72 bells, 72 pomegranates. Aaron shall wear this while officiating, so the sound of it is heard when he comes into the sanctuary before the Lord and when he goes out, so they may not die. So Aaron also became an instrument of righteousness before the Lord. And literally the sound was a high octave, almost like an angelic tone of ringing bells. How beautiful is that? Also in... Uh, Exodus 39, 24 to 26, on the hem of the robe they made, this is after the fact, the first was the commandment, the second was the fulfillment. On the hem of the robe they made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarns out of fine twined linen, and they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates all around the robe. And here's a picture of the bell 
just so you know they found one in the city of David and it, it uh, resounded at a high B octave which is a heavenly beautiful tone and so we believe these are the bells that came from the Kohen Gadol the high priest's actual robe also in 1st Kings 7 13 to 22 this is Bezalel made columns that they were two rows of pomegranates circling the top of the network now this is when Solomon built the what's called Beth HaMikdash, the house of sanctification, the house of the Lord, what's known famously as the first temple on the top of the pillars, right? When you're walking in, here's a picture. You see the limestone brickwork, if you will, large. They were large stones, but they were stacked like bricks. And you see in the front, the two columns, Yaquin and Boaz, were their names, which means the Lord's my establishment and the Lord's my strength. And on the top, they were in the shape of a pomegranate with 200 pomegranates all around. Also, something to give us further understanding that if you're going in the presence of God, and you have to go past these pomegranates, which is almost like a trophy or a symbol of a pomegranate, because they were really in the land of Israel, you're going into the presence of God. What is God speaking about the pomegranate? Why is he allowing this to be something you go past to get to him? In other words, you have to examine that God is fruitful, God is beautiful, God is holy. Remember also, this is the color of red, like the priesthood. I told you that also these could be embroidered on the priest belts. Here is an example of the priest belt, <clears throat> which is embroidered in pomegranates, beautifully embroidered. And the color of a pomegranate is scarlet, the, cover, the color of our redemption, the color of our freedom, the blood of Mashiach, the blood of Jesus Christ. Also, unmatched beauty, this scarlet color red, uh, was the color of the temple veil. Uh, and again, many of the colors on the high priest outfit involved scarlet. The symbology of scarlet and blood with the crown of kingship is almost undeniable, beloved. And inside, the fruit literally looks like gems. In a little bit here, I'm going to cut one open for you to see. So first of all, here's our pomegranate. Now notice, got to be committed to this. It's a beautiful pomegranate. It has a thin covering of white on it. Beautiful. When you cut it open, not only is there a Star of David, but the fruit is like literal rubies and gems. Talk about from heaven and from paradise. Not to mention the health benefits of pomegranates and the antioxidant values unmatched okay also during passover we have to understand that <clears throat> because of the dry branches this is what people used to cook and roast the passover offering korban pasok the passover offering for uh, the time of passover when the passover lamb was slain another archetype of the lord but it happened on a pomegranate branch uh, so that it didn't, uh, because of the water or the hydration of the branches, it didn't uh, steam instead of roast the animal. Um, <clears throat> now, one last thing we need to know about pomegranates is if the pomegranate is in the house of the Lord, on the priest, in the presence of God, and if the pomegranate is on the front doors, if you will, of the presence of God, and if when we went into the promised land, the first thing we saw is pomegranates, it's undeniable that before you go into the land of God's presence, into the house of God's presence, and into the literal Shekhinah, which is the literal manifest dwelling, the weight, the literal weight of the cloud of God, the personage of God himself, that you have to go through the pomegranate. And so is this something like the knowledge of good and evil, or is this something more like the tree of life? Here seen is another famous picture by James Tassat of the linen belts that wrapped the Kohanim, the priests. I added red colored pomegranates again because of our understanding of uh, possibly what the belts look like. And uh, again, we see priests carrying the presence of God and what's going before the presence? Pomegranates. See, this is why we know that this is a fruit of life. Some say this is possibly connected to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, but at the same time, if you realize that once we ate that fruit, we were out of the presence of God, then that's impossible. But if we understand that this may have been closer to the tree of life, which we will eat, 
Jesus said to those who overcome, I will give them right to eat a tree of life, something exactly like this, then you know that by eating this, you have to go past it before you go into the paradise of God. In other words, you have to go past the symbology, the beauty, and it's something literally you can taste and see uh, that this is some type of symbol and shadow of heaven, of the fruit of heaven, of everlasting life, not just of fertility, but of, of rebirth, of re renewal and restoration and redemption and regeneration and repentance. Why? Because we are coming back in to the things and places which God has for us by examining the things which God has given us to understand him. Thereby, we subsequently, when our heart is right, Jesus said, learn of me. Then we do understand God by getting the clues, right? That our father is trying to teach his children. Thank you.